Humankind seems intent on replicating itself in machine. Even if one of the principles of robotics says it should always be possible to tell a robot from a human. No longer automatons, these robots respond to random stimuli. See the toy and fetch it, a cognitive response once unthinkable. In years to come, their artificial intelligence could be adapted to help us with housework or to care for children or our elders. The technology is already here. It's ready to be deployed. The only thing that's really slowing us down in some cases is that we're not sure how it will work with society, what the legal and ethical uh, connections will be. Ibo, sit down. Well, as you can see, like real dogs, these are designed sometimes to disobey orders. And inventors keep on trying to give robots more and more ability to think and to act independently. But responsible developers have to ask themselves how to prevent them doing things we don't want, but also how to respond if they do so. Already we have cars that park themselves, but who's responsible if things go wrong? Auto driving. In a decade, cars could be driving themselves, but if there's an accident, is the owner or the manufacturer to blame? <laughs> no hands anywhere. No hands, no feet. No. And if robots like this are to play a role in healthcare, how do we protect patient safety? These topics have been discussed at Europe's first conference on ethics and robotics at the University of Sussex. You can't have the robots know for sure that what they do will or will not hurt a person, for example. Um, so we have to think very much about our laws. We have to think about how we safely operate. So every person who buys a robot has obligations just like a car. Another rule says robots should not be designed solely or primarily to kill or harm humans. And yet weapons makers are poised to offer unmanned aircraft that could do just that. The next generation of drones, of military robots, will have much more autonomy. In fact, it'll have the ability to take decisions whether or not to kill. They're big questions, which will take just as much intelligence to answer as the artificial intelligence which posed them. Ty Genwright, Sky News, Brighton. Well, joining us now from our central London studio is Dr. Emma Byrne, an expert in artificial intelligence AI. Dr. Byrne, welcome to you. It's, uh, I suppose, quite easy to obsess with the science fiction angle here. The truth is, where our AI is concerned, a lot of the applications are actually rather benign. They are, yes. I mean, I, for one, I'm a contact, and glass, contact lens and glasses wearer. Um, and I've got an appointment in a, a week or so to go and get my eyes done with laser surgery. Um, and I'm quite confident of the fact that um, the entire thing from assessing the shape of my eye through to sticking the lasers on it will be done by a computer. Um, but it's the kind of thing we don't tend to think of as very intelligent. You go in, you lie down underneath the machine and a surgeon in a gown is behind you and you assume that that's the person in charge. But actually it's the computer that's doing the whole thing. And, mm. and it's not very noticeable because it doesn't look like what we've seen in, in science fiction. So where do those misgivings kick in then? Uh, where, where, where do the worries principally lie and all people to be worried? Um, I think the, the worry principally lies in the fact that we're allowing machines to have autonomy. Um, and the only other things that, that we have around us that have a degree of autonomy are, are animals. So if you think of the adage of, of never work with children or animals, you could add to that in future, never work with children, animals or robots, because you can't entirely predict what it is that they're going to do. And is, are we sure that the evolutionary track of artificial intelligence is relentlessly upwards? There's no sense in which we're, we're banging our heads on a, on a ceiling of development. It just will continue in its inexorable rise. I think so. I see no ending um, or no end in sight to funding for things like, for example, military technologies or um, autonomous driving. Um, most of the large motor manufacturers are now putting an awful lot of money into university research here in the UK and abroad. Uh, so, for example, they've been talking about it for years, yeah. haven't they? Ever? I mean, you know, the driverless car was the stuff of my childhood. You don't need to know how old I am now, but it's been that story's been around for a long time. Absolutely. Um, but we've now got to the point where, for example, in the United States, the Google car actually has its own driving license. So in Nevada and California, you see the autonomous car driving itself. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I, I did actually see that while I was in California earlier this year. And my excitement was, was, um, was something to behold. Yeah, I'm sure it was. <laughs> now, it's the militarization 
uh, that, that chills some people to the, to the bone, doesn't it? I mean, we were just looking at pictures of a, a fighter jet with no pilot. And you can see the temptations, you can see the attractions for a military planner. There you've got a jet that can fly and do things aerobatically, pulling enormous Gs without a pilot. You put the human being into the mix and suddenly they black out at whatever it is, 9 Gs. So you can see the military applications are very attractive of robotics. Yes. And this is something that ever since I began my career in this field, so in the late 90s, early 2000s, that people have been talking about. Um, and it's good to see that, that this, um, this particular conference happened in the UK because I know it's something that we, that researchers, the research community in the UK have been leading the way in for as long as I can remember. So about 10 years ago there was something called the robotics retreat where these principles of robotics were first mooted. The idea that robots should only ever be used to harm people in the case of, of the defense of, of a nation. The, the, so I was going to say, we haven't got very long, but I was going to say just on the point about guidelines, I mean, there was a famous, famous Isaac Asimov, wasn't the science fiction writer, who had these principles of robotics, but we don't have, do we have any universal guidelines and indeed what agency could probably lay, actually lay them down? Yes, I'm afraid we don't um, and the principles that the robotics retreat came up with and the principles that were discussed in Brighton this week um, are slightly different to the Isaac Asimov laws of robotics. Um, but the problem is that we're reliant at the moment on the goodwill of the robots owners and the robots developers and manufacturers uh, to, to adhere to those principles of, of minimizing harm and making sure that we can trace who a robot belongs to, for example. It's kind of like we're in the early days of having more cars or very few cars on the road and, and very few laws to back that up. Um, okay. Over the years, we've developed things like the MOT, seatbelt laws, yeah. speed limits. We're going to see a similar, I think, increase in, in legislation, national and international, uh, to make sure that robots are deployed safely and usefully. Okay. okay. Dr. Emma Byrne, good luck with that uh, contact lens surgery, laser eye <laughs> surgery. It hurts a little bit, by the way. Thanks a lot. So I hear. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. As the fog. Espanol, English, Deutsch. Normalmente produzco solo videos en inglés y español. Normally I produce only videos in English and Spanish. Normalerweise produziere ich nur videos in English and Spanish. Pero hoy voy a hacer otra excepción y traducirlo también en alemán. But today I make another exception and translate it into German too. Aber heute werde ich nochmal eine Ausnahme machen und es auch in Deutsch übersetzen. Ja, algunas semanas tengo escrito en mi lista de tareas por hacer de traducir el video hashtag BTC4. Now, already some weeks ago, I have written on my to-do list to translate the video BTC4, hashtag BTC4. Schon seit ein paar Wochen habe ich äh, auf meiner To-Do-Liste geschrieben, ähm, den Video BTC4 in Deutsch zu übersetzen. Estoy segura que esta idea puede ayudar a mucha gente económicamente. I'm sure that this can help many people economically. Ich bin sicher, dass diese Idee vielen Leuten uh, finanziell helfen kann. Y da motivación para aprender Bitcoin and give motivation to learn about Bitcoin. Und Motivation geben, um über Bitcoin zu lernen. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy bajo, económico. At the moment the price of Bitcoin is very low, economic. Im Moment ist der Preis von Bitcoin sehr tief. Sería el momento ideal para invertir. Hoy es el 15 de abril 2015. Would be the ideal moment to invest. Today is April 15, 2015. 
Es wäre der ideale Moment zu investieren. Heute ist der 15. April 2015. El 27 de marzo 2015 he publicado en mi canal de YouTube Vanos Enigma el primer video sobre hashtag BTC4 explicando cómo me vino esta idea. On March 27th of 2015, um, I published my fir the first video about hashtag BTC4 in my channel YouTube Vanos Enigma, e explaining how I got the idea. Am 27. März 2015 habe ich in meinem YouTube-Channel Vanos Enigma den ersten, den ersten Video über Hashtag BTC4 veröffentlicht und äh, erzählt, erklärt, wie ich diese Idee bekommen habe. La idea consiste principalmente en lo siguiente. The idea mainly consists in the following. Die idea besteht hauptsächlich in folgenden, folgendem. Imprimir en direcciones de Bitcoin en papel. Diez o mínimo diez o mejor cien. To print Bitcoin directions in paper, at least 10 or better 100. Bitcoin adressen in Papier ausdrucken, um, minimum 10 or besser gleich 100. Y luego poner en cada dirección de Bitcoin una pequeña cantidad de Bitcoin. And then put in every Bitcoin direction a little amount of Bitcoin. Und dann in jede Bitcoin Adresse eine kleine Summe von Bitcoin transferieren. Y la próxima vez, cuando otra vez ves una persona por la calle pidiendo dinero, and the next time uh, you see again a person begging for money on the street. Und das nächste Mal, wenn du wieder eine Person auf der Straße betteln siehst. Y para tus amigos y amigas. And for your friends, of course. Und für deine Freunde natürlich. O tal vez eh, de propina en un restaurante. Or maybe a tip in a restaurant. Oder trinkgeld im restaurant. Bueno, a la hora de imprimir también copiar y guardar las llaves privadas de Bitcoin. De direcciones de Bitcoin. Or when you print the Bitcoin addresses, um, copy and save the private keys of the Bitcoin addresses, of course. Wenn man die Bitcoin Adressen druckt, auch die, uh, auch die privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Address Schlüsseln, um, kopieren und speichern. Y a la hora de distribuir las direcciones de Bitcoin, escribir la fecha, por ejemplo, hoy es el 15 de abril 2015, escribir la fecha, más plus cuatro años, eh, igual 15 de abril 2019. And then in the moment when you distribute 
uh, the Bitcoin addresses and you write the date, for example, today, April 15th, 2015, plus, plus four years uh, is April 15th, 2019. Und dann in dem Moment, wenn man die Bitcoin-Adressen verteilt, auf das Papier schreiben, das heutige Datum, zum Beispiel 15. April 2015, plus vier Jahre ist gleich 15.04.2019. Luego vas a explicar a la gente, mira, esta es la llave privada. Tú y yo la tengo, la tienes. Si no quitas, transfieres este dinero de Bitcoin eh, en estos cuatro años, yo lo vuelvo a tener. Tener o sacar. Then you explain to the people, look, this is the private key. I have it and you have it. If you don't take this money, Bitcoin, out of this account, I will take it out in this um, in these four years, at the end of these four years. Und dann erklärst du den Leuten, schau, das ist der private Schlüssel. Um, ich und du haben diesen privaten Schlüssel, Bitcoin Schlüssel. Wenn du bis Ende dieser vier Jahre das Geld Bitcoin nicht raus tust, transfer, äh, dann hole ich es zurück. De esta forma das más motivación a la gente para empezar a aprender cómo funciona Bitcoin. This way you give more motivation to the people to learn how the technology of Bitcoin functions. Auf diese Weise gibst du mehr Motivation den Leuten zu lernen, wie die Technologie von Bitcoin funktioniert. En mi video antiguo he explicado eh, cómo he tomado la decisión de los cuatro años. In my old video I explained how I made the decision for the four years. In meinem Originalvideo habe ich erklärt, wie ich zu die Entscheidung getroffen habe äh, mit den vier Jahren. A continuación voy a pegar este video. Now later I will paste this video. Im Anschluss werde ich diesen Video ankleben. En este momento el precio de Bitcoin es muy económico. Uh, at the moment the price of Bitcoin is very cheap. Pero casi todo el mundo tiene muy poco dinero para invertir. But almost everybody has a very little money to invest. Debería decir que esta idea me vino hoy especialmente cuando vi otra vez una chica ahí pidiendo dinero por la calle. Actually, I must say first this idea today I got especially when I saw again um, one girl begging for money in the streets. Me gustaría ayudar, pero yo tampoco me sobra mucho el dinero. I would really like to help everybody, but I, I don't have either too much money. And así que me vino la siguiente idea. So I got the following idea. It's, uh, it's más bien un juego. Uh, it's uh, rather a game. 
um, lo que es muy importante elegir un monedero de Bitcoin que solo tú mismo misma, tienes la llave privada. What is very important to choose um, Bitcoin wallet a company which you only possess the private key. For example, uh, blockchain.info. Por ejemplo, la empresa blockchain.info. Luego, imprimir en papel um, la llave privada y también guardarlo tú mismo. Then to print in paper the private key and uh, of course save for, for yourself that private key. Bueno, ya estamos imprimiendo, imprime por lo menos 10. So now we are already printing, so at least print 10 directions, 10 direcciones. Luego pones algo de Bitcoin, una cantidad, lo que, lo que te da la gana en esta dirección. Then you put some Bitcoin, uh, the amount, whatever you want, in, that, in these directions. Y la próxima vez que sales de casa ya tienes algo que dar a los que están ahí pidiendo por la calle. And the next time you go out of the house, you have already something to give for these people who are begging on the streets. Y por ejemplo, y claro, para tus amigos, amigas, and for your friends, of course. Eso da motivación a la gente para aprender Bitcoin y And this gives motivation for the people to learn about Bitcoin. Y la parte del juego consiste en lo siguiente. And the game part uh, consists in the following. Explicas a la gente, mira, esta es la cl clave privada, que es la clave secreta. You explain to the people, look, this is the private key, which must be secret. And uh, you have it and uh, me. And uh, explicas, esa persona y yo mismo la tiene. Y antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié un poco de idea de hasta cuatro años. First, I thought of five years, but then I changed uh, my opinion to four years. Later, explain. Después, lo expli explico por qué. Les dices, mira, tienes cuatro años para poner esta cantidad de Bitcoin a otra dirección. Si no lo, lo has quitado después de cuatro años, yo lo quito. So you explain them, you have four years to take this Bitcoin out of this direction, of this secret uh, key direction. If uh, you don't do it, uh, I do it after these four years. So you lose this. That's the, this part of the game. It's uh, la parte del juego. He creado este hashtag uh, BTC4 para hacerlo un poco popular. I created this hashtag BTC4 to make it a little popular. Antes pensaba en cinco años, pero luego cambié a cuatro porque te has dado cuenta que en los Simpsons la gente tiene cuatro dedos. Y Solo do, Dios tiene cinco dedos. Um, 
first. I thought of five years, but then I changed my mind to four years. Um, did you notice that in The Simpsons, people have a four fingers and only God has five fingers? Uh, I'll show some pictures. Voy a enseñar algunas imágenes de Los Simpsons. De los manos y dedos de Simpsons. Some pictures of the hands and fingers of Simpsons. Uh, pero antes quiero recordar que um, es muy probable que en también cuatro o cinco en los próximos años el valor de Bitcoin puede subir mucho. Just want to remember before that uh, the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin can rise very much in these next years. Así que si solo pones una cantidad pequeña más tarde, puede ser de gran ayuda. Even if you just put a little small amount later, it can be big help. Uh, no solo para, bueno, es un juego. <laughs> si la persona lo quita antes de cuatro años, para, es para esta persona. Si no, es para ti. Si te recuerdas y guardas bien la llave privada. So, uh, it's... This is the game part. If uh, the, the person takes the money out, it's for that person. But if they forget it after these four years, you can take it out. And it can be really... <laughs> bueno, imprimir también la llave pública y la llave privada. Y si, por ejemplo... Okay, first translate. Print and not just the private key, but on also the public key. Así que si, por ejemplo, explicas a la gente. Mira, si alguna persona quiere enviarte Bitcoin, pero tú no tienes ninguna dirección, así que puedes dar este, esta llave pública a la persona. Mira, muy bien, la llave pública, no la llave secreta das a esa persona o cualquier persona y te pueden enviar Bitcoin a esa dirección. So, remember, uh, the public key you can give to anybody and if somebody wants to send you some Bitcoin and, you, and this person doesn't have any, so you have already this public address where they can send you Bitcoin. 